Hello there, submarine agony enthusiasts. I know it's been a bit, but I'm finally back to talk about the newest major updates to Barotrauma. Primarily the Uncharted Depths update, but also some of the minor stuff added at the end of 2020, as well as the recent Caves update. But before we start, if you're here trying to decide whether or not to buy this game, this video is absolutely a recommendation. I'm not going to spoil things per se, as the game is more about your journey through the threats rather than uncovering what they are, but if you like to go in blind, just know it's a thumbs up from me. But before you go get eaten by monsters, could you please drop a like, because this channel is teeny tiny, which is a statement I hope ages poorly, uh, but for now, that's the only way for us to get picked up by the algorithm. Since there's a lot to cover, and I've been working on this video for a while, know that some of this footage may be from prior to the caves update when I'm talking about features that have remained unchanged. I only bring this up because of the extreme alterations to economy and storage that the caves update brought, which is something I spoke about the need for in my previous video. The issue I was running into was the massive amount of storage space any individual player could have by filling their inventory with toolboxes. First, they changed toolboxes to only have 6 slots, but that wasn't nearly enough, so they gave toolboxes back their 12 slots, but made it so you could only carry it in your hand and not in your inventory to keep people from stacking them. They balanced this out by adding a slot for a tool belt, which expanded the inventory by 12 spaces, but was not able to hold large objects such as plant pots or rifles. Then, they reduced the number of slots in the tool belt to 6. Obviously, there are still ways of bypassing these restrictions. It turns out the best storage option is the friends we made along the way, but dragging a box or a corpse along with you keeps your hands full and adds to the sense of vulnerability and the need to stay aware of your surroundings. But it isn't all nerfs across the board. The ability to stack certain smaller objects, such as medical supplies and ammunition, has been added so that six morphine syringes no longer take up six times the amount of space of a harpoon gun. There are some really cool visually striking additions to cover, but I let in with this for the video because it's a change that's easy to overlook on a cursory glance from a visual perspective, but makes a really big difference, I would argue improvement, to how I approach and experience gameplay. But on to the pretty stuff. The way maps are generated has been fully overhauled, and it breathes so much new life into the game. Before we even get to the environmental changes, just the way the walls of levels are shaped has been improved. This gives the experience of navigating a much more hands-on feel that rewards attentive captains. The layout changes even make the previously existing random assets feel more connected with the world. Ruins and wrecks can still be sitting out in the open, but now you can also find them nestled in canyons or behind massive destructible ice sheets, more on those later, and since there are multiple paths to your objective, it feels like you're discovering these locations rather than repeatedly and inevitably coming across them in every map. Another fantastic contribution to both the variety of levels and the sense of progression in the campaign is biomes. Europa is a frozen tundra on the surface, so the higher levels reflect that frigid reality, but as you get deeper, you'll see a more lush middle ground as the heat from the molten core meets the cold of the surface and allows plant life to thrive in lukewarm waters. And finally, you reach the bowels of hell. A great deal of variety has been added to the environmental threats you can face, too. Rough currents, fiery lava pillars, diamond-studded lightning rocks that can overload your ship's circuitry if you get too close, all of these things make just flipping on autopilot and walking away a much less lucrative option for navigation than it used to be. But an addition that is less visually striking than the things I just mentioned, but I think I like the most, is Ice? Yeah, seriously. You can come across icebergs or jutting ice pillars, which can be destroyed with some well-placed turret shots, or, barring that, a very determined crew member with a plasma cutter. Once they're broken, the ice shards fade into the background and can no longer be physically interacted with. I actually asked Regalis directly, and he says it was always intended to be that way, and for good reason. The icebergs are moving masses that will not hesitate to titanic the hell out of your ship if you aren't paying attention. They existed previously, but not to this extent, and not destructible. The ice pillars can stretch across the map to block your path, or, like I said earlier, conceal the entrance to a cave. And let's talk about caves. They got a whole update all to themselves, and it shows because it's spectacular. Some of them have vents that spew gas clouds that will drain your oxygen tank as you pass through them. Others have tight tunnels full of explosive spikes, and others have walls lined with hallucinogenic mushrooms that will turn your expedition into a trip. By the way, all of them do still have monsters in them, so, you know, proceed with caution. These places are sprawling, making even some ruins look small by comparison. The tunnels twist and turn, and if you aren't careful, you can find yourself a lot further from safety than you thought you were. That's where shuttles come in. 
Detachable mini subs have been a cool but relatively underutilized feature in sub design that this update makes a viable investment. You'll be fine without one, but having a small, agile vessel that can serve as a storage or rescue vehicle for an away team looks far more lucrative now that certain missions can take your crew much further away from the main sub than ever before. The caves play host to two of these missions, mining missions where players must extricate a rare mineral outcrop from deep in a cave, and nest removal where you intentionally swim into a horde of fully grown and, thanks to a recent update, baby monsters to clear them out. To try to clear them out. To die while attempting to clear them out. I hate it. It's great. Particularly when you pair it with the limits imposed by the storage nerfs, cave expeditions are a fantastic and terrifying new high in Baratrauma's gameplay loop that I can't wait to see further expanded and iterated on. But the rest of the world has also been brought up to par. Adjustments have been made to the way ruins are generated, new traps have been added and old ones adjusted to pose more of a threat, and while I'm sure that with time, players will learn to circumvent these just as efficiently as always, for the time being, I and my crewmates have consistently fallen prey even to the traps we recognize. Seemingly as a precursor to the long-awaited upcoming edition of Infested and Ruined Outposts, there are now beacon repair missions. You are sent to fix up and activate a small beacon which will allow the creation of an outpost on that part of the map. This new mission type stands out as it is the first time a mission has required at least basic understanding of Baratrauma's wiring system. You need to use wires to connect the beacon's power generator to its other machines in addition to fixing leaks and non-functional systems. It's fairly simple, but like I said, full-on derelict outposts are coming and this line of thinking makes me even more excited by the direction the devs are taking design-wise. Oh, and once you flip that beacon on, you had better leave someone behind to maintain it, as it will attract a horde of monsters who really don't like the sound of sonar, and if the beacon turns off, you fail the mission. Godspeed, Disposable Engineer number 62. With this and the mining mission, it's nice to see mission-related jobs being created outside of the ship for non-military or medical personnel. In the past, occasionally otherwise friendly people would start a mutiny and derail a mission just to make something interesting happen after doing nothing but stand still and repair junction boxes for 20 minutes while the captain and security team were out fighting monsters in a ruin. Now a dive team can be comprised of specialists who bring their own necessary loadout rather than an unstoppable squad of one-person armies. But it's more challenging than ever before in an extremely positive way. Speaking of challenge, the new monsters. And the old ones. Changes have been made to enemy AI to help them better navigate the inside of your ship. Oh, and also to get inside of your ship. Husks, the formerly human zombies, can now use their ID cards to open doors, which is fucking bullshit. Jesus Christ. Oh lord, help me. Help me. Why? 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 I already mentioned baby monsters who look fresh out of someone's chest and aliens. That's not a dig, though. Chest bursters are scary, and tiny slimier versions of larger monsters are only going to turn out looking so many ways. There's also an entirely new enemy type in the form of spiky, shooty boys. Sorry, spinelings. Quick but fragile creatures that shoot hull-penetrating harpoons, which, yeah, only do a little bit of damage to your hull or crew if they're in the way, but you rarely face only one of these guys, and 10 or 20 small holes can be just as devastating as one big one. They're a great addition to the enemy roster as they present a new and unique threat while still being dealt with through traditional means. The same thing can be said about the newly reworked Watcher. They used to be a little glowy dude with stick legs, but now they're like a cyclops in bondage gear. As the name suggests, the Watcher likes to watch. Unfortunately, when the Watcher watches, you had better watch out, as being watched leads to steadily increasing nausea and psychosis, vomiting, internal damage, and eventually death. Not that scary until you're outside of the ship on a mining mission and suddenly it's right behind you. Damaging a Watcher without killing it makes it shoot poison gas and retreat until it can watch again, so aim for the eye. But a new enemy with a much less conventional means of engagement is Ballast Flora. If you have trypophobia, the fear or disgust of closely packed holes, I'm going to give you a chance to avert your eyes real quick, because this parasitic spore is clearly meant to make your skin crawl. Ballast Flora, as the name suggests, enters your ship's ballast tank as you pass through a cloud of floating spores, and once it blooms, it will slowly, but not that slowly, make its way towards the power centers of your ship. If the visual presentation makes you truly uncomfortable, it may come as some consolation to hear that you can kill it with fire. But be sure to prepare carefully, as when it takes damage, the flora will excrete toxic gas, and if your ship is still powered, will use the infected ballast pump to flood the room. If you destroy the root, the whole organism dies, but depending on your resources and capabilities, ballast flora is a serious threat that requires constant vigilance to mitigate. So much so that the devs have recently made it easier to beat by making it vulnerable to plasma cutters. 
Sometimes the monsters are sweet though. You can now find mysterious eggs and hatch them to get a ship mascot. Be sure you remember to feed them though, or they may take a bite out of one of your crewmates. So that's most of the broader changes, but there have been countless adjustments and improvements across the board to crew and monster AI, and lots of small but impactful features added to gameplay in general. I mentioned it briefly in the last video, but cleaning and farming have been added, and in particular farming is extremely useful. Cleaning is too, if you have an extended run-in with a watcher and don't like puke green walls, but the ability to grow various types of plants which can be used to extend medical supplies, poison the heavily armored mud raptors, or just blaze it, which prevents psychosis for some reason, add a whole layer of gameplay, and yet another variation of job for your crew to do. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. Literally. Pipes used to just be cosmetic, but now they actually do something. Similarly, you can now lay down in beds for a boost to passive healing, so adding a bed to the med bay can help fix minor injuries without eating into your medical supplies. Let's see, what else? There are crates specifically labeled as being for medical items rather than just normal or chemical variants. But the single most important change in the last three months, the one that I've been waiting for the longest and which has had the greatest impact on my ability to enjoy Barotrauma, has got to be the long overdue implementation of the greatest tool known to mankind. That's right. I'm talking about glow sticks. So that's a look at Baratrauma's triumphant entrance into 2021. I'm really impressed and pleased with the direction the game is headed. Do you agree? If not, how dare you? No, <laughs> what do you feel is missing? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, as I said at the start, hitting the like button helps get more eyes on our work, so I seriously appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this, admittedly with some gaps in content, you can subscribe and hit the bell to get notified anytime we upload more Barotrauma to come, but also reviews and showcases of other games as well. Thank you so much to the 500 and mm, subscribers who have slowly but surely trickled in. I hope these videos continue to be to your liking. But until next time, I'm Jamie. Thanks for watching Standard Gaming. <laughs>